The View from the Streets of Tehran, and Thomas Erdbrink, the New York Times bureau chief, joined me a short time ago. Thomas Erdbrink, welcome to the program, and thank you for joining me. Let me ask you about what's going on on the ground in Tehran, because you've written incredibly movingly about people's emotions, people being so happy that they were crying. What is the emotion that you're getting most of there? Well, of course, right after the deal was made and um, President Rouhani announced um, what he called the Iranian victory, um, a lot of people came up to me, people who I, mean, who I know, my neighbors, friends, uh, who, who, who were very moved and touched. And you mustn't forget, these people have been living under incredible pressures over the last years. They had to face sanctions, high unemployment, high inflation. And basically, they have grown so accustomed to hearing only horrible news that this is the first time in almost a decade that they're hearing something positive. Now, that said, today, the second day, reality is also starting to kick in. People uh, today um, were a bit more subdued, and they were telling me, sure, we made this deal and we are happy, but we've been tricked so many times. Maybe this time we'll be tricked again. And people told me that they really, really want to be sure um, that their future will be brighter than it has been. Mm -hmm. Thomas, what about the usual suspects, the hardliners, some of the hardline press, or even Ayatollah Khamenei? What has his reaction been publicly? Well, Ayatollah Khamenei has, is, is widely seen as the, 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 uh, the architect behind the scenes of this deal. Um, we don't know what prompted him to make this deal, but he has clearly given the go-ahead to President Rouhani uh, to go out there and start uh, trying to repair those broken relations with the West. Now, he came out yesterday um, saying that, yes, he supported the deal. He thought the deal was a success, but he also had one caveat. He said, um, as the way you present the deal to me sounds like a success. So he left a kind of way out in case the deal doesn't work in the future for him to say, well, uh, this is not working out. I haven't totally backed this deal to the maximum. Now, if you look at the normal hardliners, the hardline clerics and the Revolutionary Guard commanders, they have been very, very silent on this deal. They have been supporting the negotiating team, as has been the state line for over the past month. Uh, but they have not come out with their usual criticism, which is a signal that across the Iranian political spectrum, um, most factions in power are in full support of the deal as it is now. Will they still support it after a week, after a month, when, uh, when maybe some issues will be raised, some problems will start? We don't know. And Thomas, finally, what do Iranians say about the fact that this is happening now, so many years later? It was obviously impossible that this could happen under Ahmadinejad, the previous president. You know, um, one young man came up to me and he told me, Thomas, I'm now 30 years old. When Ahmadinejad came to power, I was 22. Why were those eight years of my life wasted? Why am I still without a job? Why do I hold a university degree uh, but don't have a future in this country? Now, some people are very bitter, but at the same time, the emotions, the hope is so high that people are ready to cling on to everything they can. On that note, Thomas Edbrink, thank you so much for your insights from Tehran.